Nothing in this recording is intended as investment advice, and the people in this recording may hold positions in the companies they talk about. Do not make any investment based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. ECR Minerals Chief Operating Officer Mike Whitlow on Just Stocks this morning. Mike, morning. Morning, Andrew. How are you? Yeah, good, Mike. Uh, look, significant update uh, yesterday. News of a, a placement here for ECR. A uh, bit of a discount to the recent trading price, a significant premium to the last uh, raise that was done about six months back, bringing in £585,000. Uh, Mike, just tell us a little bit more about the, the motivation for doing it. Why was it done now? I mean, look, in an ideal world, we would have got the results uh, back a little bit sooner. We know activities exploded in, in uh, Victoria. If we go back a few months when we first sort of uh, embarked on this journey together, we talked about uh, the interest starting to brew around Victoria, and we've seen that particularly with uh, Great Pacific, we've seen it with uh, Southern Cross in particular at Sunday Creek, and their amazing results there. So congratulations to the team down there. Um, but there's more activity, and with more activity, it means that there's uh, a bit more of a, a lead and waiting time on on results. And, and I think, you know, in an ideal world, we would have liked to have either got the results out or disposed of Bruin Lane and generated some more revenue from that as we have done with the disposal of the quartet rig. And we'd have been in a position where, you know, we would have had sufficient budget to get out and, and get the exploration campaign kicked off, uh, either in Victoria or Queensland. Um, one of the things that I've seen people question, and I want to just kind of address this pretty early on, is we made a statement regarding the disposal of the quartet rig and our GNA. And, you know, the $33,000 that we receive each month from uh, the purchaser on a higher purchase agreement. It was done via a higher purchase agreement because it was more beneficial um, for them for taxation purposes. Uh, each month we receive a, 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 a firm and that GNA doesn't necessarily mean that it allows us to go and drill lots of different um, of our opportunities, different uh, assets. And in order for us to accelerate the business and to keep this fast pace moving forward. We needed an additional budget, and we're confident you know, that the disposal of non-core assets or being able to utilise, you know, accumulated tax losses, whatever that might may be, um, will come into play at some point. But we're now sort of into March, and we're ready to kick the season off, both up in Queensland and to continue our activities down in Victoria. In order to do that, we needed some some uh, capital. On the seventh of March, the shares were trading at zero point three one pence. Um, the shares have hovered around probably 0 0.28 and 0 0.34 for a couple of weeks. And we're, we're you know, we're thrilled with that. It's a, it's a sort of solid 65, 75% premium to where we last raised. And I think the market's rewarding us for uh, our efforts. And we're really grateful for, for that support in the market. Unfortunately, the shares then rocket to a level over a very short period of time. And when you're raising cash, fortunately, we're in a position where we have to um, make a decision and that pricing metric unfortunately i've seen people saying why didn't you issue it at 0.4 um it, it, it simply just doesn't work that way and, and you know the money was out there the offer came in it all really happened quickly so i've seen people say oh it's okay you know you've got your pals have all sort of participated to my knowledge there's a couple of people who participated and they came in for decent tickets the good people have been very supportive um the rest was was conducted by the book runner and I'm confident that they will have uh, provided us with a decent line of, of, of capital. We're seeing great volume, record volumes, in fact. And I'm pretty sure we'll get through the uh, uh, the churn that you get whenever you raise uh, cash. And we'll start moving back to a more sensible. We've got a lot going on now. It's about giving yourselves as many lives as you can. And like a cat, we want to have a, at least nine. So, you know, that's where we are. As a bit of an overview, I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank shareholders for um, you know, supporting us in the market. It is appreciated. We understand that there's a little bit of short-term frustration. All we can do is um, acknowledge that. We can't apologise for, you know, creating an opportunity for this business to get back to much greater levels. We know there's a lot of people trapped further up and we have to create a business that can sustain that, Andrew. Um, and our ambitions are to build a company with, you know, 20, 30 million pound market cap. That's where the company was historically. We think we can take it back there again. So tell us more, Mike, in terms of how much runway this additional cash gives ECR and what are the plans in terms of uh, use of proceeds? 
Yeah, I mean, what it does is it allows us to uh, get back out in the field in, in Queensland at Lulworth. Um, we're still waiting on the Conda Peringa uh, licence being awarded. You know, that that's going to come into play at some point in the near future, we would hope. Uh, but it allows us to get to Lulworth. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to do a little bit of um, trenching up there pretty early on, so as soon as possible, really. Uh, we've, we've had a successful field campaign in 2023. I keep saying it. We feel that the results there were a little bit underappreciated and the market really didn't give us any recognition. Now we've got a bit more activity and interest. I'd urge investors to go and look at some of the results we had. Um, you know, sampling isn't a, an exact art. So what we want to do is we want to get the excavator in, um, get subsurface, remove some material and have a, have a bit of a closer look at it. And then um, assuming all, you know, everything points in the right direction, get a machine, uh, get a drill rig in and start to, to drill there in, you know, over the next sort of two quarters. So Q2 being now into Q3 as soon as possible. And whilst we're doing that, we'll be moving into, uh, we'll be moving into uh, Balliston. We've got some work that we need to conduct there. The guys will be on site Monday and we'll be back drilling uh, with a bit of look at our asset at Tambo. You know, we've done some rock chip sampling there. We've had 22 grams a ton as our best uh, chip sample. We've got about 370 square kilometres of, of ground out there at Tambo. And we've, we we just haven't done any work there. Uh, and, and we'd like to get some drill holes in, puncture a few holes in the earth and see uh, what we can do. You know, we think what we have achieved in this recent drilling campaign can be replicated. We're still waiting on news. Christmas got in the way. We didn't want to. We didn't want to wait. So of course, it's been broken down into two, uh, two uh, sort of pr projects. If you want, it's it's one in the same drill. But we've got Davy Road and Cuboid Hill. We await um, some of the initial results from Cuboid Hill. We know there's a lot of mineralization um, from the quartz zones that we've intercepted. We don't know the results. Uh, we'll find out shortly. Um, but we've got some really high grade gold out of Davy Road. So I think what we're looking for is we've got uh, these narrow vein shoots of gold. You know, it's a, it's nuggeting, of course, in uh, Victoria. That's the nature of the geology. Now we're looking for not necessarily high grade. We've got high high grade results. We're looking for scalability. So we're looking for size now. And if we can find that, then that would be fantastic. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're busy, busy, busy. Guys back on the ground as of Monday. And, uh, and we'll be accelerating our work program. I think, you know, one of the shareholders reached out to me yesterday and I had a, had a chat to him. I'll make myself available to any of the investors should they wish to do so. Um, and they said, uh, would you not have waited for results? Yeah, we've been waiting for results. And unfortunately, you know, they, they, they take as long as they take. Uh, my theory is, is if we need to sell a non-core asset in order to be able to advance on any of our projects what happens in the meantime do the shares go for, i think at 0.4 uh, and above we had a market cap of six million quid do the shares go to 12 million quid whilst we're waiting doing nothing uh, or do they go to three and the theory is is if we raise some cash and we can accelerate the work and keep that activity up and hopefully get the results that we believe we can find from slightly changing them you know the approach then um yeah it's a it's a necessarily evil unfortunately and as i say you know I know there's frustrations. My shoulders aren't that broad, but they're broad enough to be able to take the strain of doing this job. We act with, uh, uh, you know, best intentions as shareholders. We're stakeholders, as are all of the board now. And uh, we understand, you know, when the share price isn't going the right direction, people are going to be frustrated. But it's our job to create as many opportunities to swing that back and hit fours and sixes. You know, we're not playing for defensive single runs here. We're going for fours and sixes. And if we're going to be swinging that bat in a high-risk risk exploration arena, we need as many opportunities as we can in order to convert. And we're very confident we will be able to do that. Mike, you mentioned before about the sale of non-core assets. What, what about other assets within the business you're looking to monetize? Look, we've, you know, we've got um, a land package that we went out and sort of got some um, planning permission on because it A, increases the value of the, the land and disposal, and it also will create, hopefully, um, a larger sum of for the company, which we can then utilise. Um, as with the funds that we've recently raised, directors have you know, been remunerated in shares. 
all of that cash is going into the ground. That's how we're going to unlock value. That's how we're going to get this uh, valuation to a more sensible level or back to where we used to be to so, sort of get back to that, uh, the glory days again, if you will. And, you know, we've got these accumulated tax losses. We've had a number of meetings. We have engaged a third party uh, tax specialist and we're working on it. And there's a bunch of different things we can do, you know. Uh, should we be able to, you know, create our own uh, opportunity, a small scale operation, get into uh, production and utilize the accumulated tax losses? We're going to be in a very, very strong position. Um, if we we know that these are transferable, so we can do a, a deal with a third party in order to utilize the tax losses. And we think that the valuation of, of them are potentially quite significant. We want to manage expectations and the expectations of the market. When I took this job on, if somebody had said, I'll give you a million dollars for them, we'd have probably took it. Um, we think they're worth it, you know, a lot, lot more now. Um, but we're not in a market where, you know, things are, are easy to do. It's not an ideal world. And that's the reality of where we are. You know, life is not ideal uh, in markets, but we're in the right area. We're in gold. Gold is absolutely flying right now. And, um, and antimony. You know, we've done some historical drilling. We're going to go back over that. You know, I'm not, people are going to say, why are you going back over some of the ore that you drilled, you know, years ago? We didn't test for antimony. Um, the world's antimony comes from Russia, China, South Africa, Tajikistan. Uh, I think very little of it comes from anywhere else in the world. We know now that antimony is of, of great interest. We never even tested for it. So we're going to. Um, what do we use it for? Bearings hardening of uh, alloys and steels, warheads, bullets. Um, we live in a world now. Uh, it's not difficult for people to understand. There's a east and west scenario, and antimony is becoming, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a, of interest at this present moment in time. Um, and of course, you know, we want to see whether we can make the best of that. And you know, with some of our assets, we know it's there. We know it's on the critical metals list in Australia, and that's seemingly. Uh, of great interest to people now. It's all about ESG and critical metals, renewable energies. You know, that's a, a world we live in. We've got opportunities in abundance. Um, I don't want to criticise a bag for anyone in the history of this business. Um, I think, you know, what we should do is remember some of the work, the good work that's been done by perhaps other members of the board historically too, in being able to build those relationships with, I think, the third largest mining company in the world. You know, those those conversations took place three years ago, we'd like to try to reopen as many of the old uh, archives and opportunities as we can. And we'd like to take our own you know, unique approach in order to try to um, unlock the opportunity for our shareholders. And being shareholders ourselves, we'd like to be rewarded for that. And Andrew, I've seen people complain about the shares that we were issued um, uh, over the last few days, uh, you know, Nick and I in particular. These were the shares that come from a period in December last year. We get paid after the event. You know, we're not being paid um, in advance or at the time. We get remunerated in shares that we cannot sell uh, without notifying the market. We get them at the end of the period on the assumption that we've been successful. I think the share price illustrates we're raising money at 71% premium to the last funding round. I understand it's, you know, cheesed a few people off. But, you know, judge us on what we're doing. Don't necessarily judge us on a day or even a week. Give us a few months, give us a quarter, give us a year, and then let's see where the company is. If you're not happy, um, we're not performing, I'll be the first one to hold my hands up and say, look, let's let's call it a day. Let's move on and find somebody else. And at the same time, I've been in, you know, elite coaching in my history, former life and I've always known when to step aside and I'll have no problem if this is a great success and we achieve our ambitions I'll be happy to do the same again I suppose Mike now the the concern of a placing that's now behind us uh ECR fully funded for the year ahead why would you encourage potential investors to take a look now at ECR given the opportunity and given what's planned uh, look we've got 1,755 square kilometres of acreage. You know, when people say to me, why are we going back to Ballison? Why are we back in Victoria? 
what what's our rationale in Queensland? You've got a massive land package in in Victoria, in particular, in one of the most mineral richest regions on the planet. Thirty two percent of gold produced in Australia comes from Victoria. Two percent of the world's gold, the entire planet's gold production, comes from Victoria. There's no shortage of the stuff. Um, antimony is, you know, coming into play now. We have that within our license areas, both up in the north in Queensland and in Victoria. Um, we've got a great opportunity. We would like to be able to, with confidence, say to the market, we've got enough to go out now to keep advancing the business up and to a higher level. And in order to do that, we need to be able to, you know, have some tokens uh, to, to play with. And that's where we are. You know, we've got chips. We're at the table. We're going to start spinning the wheel. And I'm hopeful that um, that we've de-risked the projects that we have in order to do that. Yeah, good to speak, Mike. Thanks for your time on Just Stocks. Cheers, mate. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.